Okay. Yeah, we'll keep going. Uh, yeah, spend some more time working on this lenses law. Uh, so in the context of everything, uh, we're working our way through Faraday's law. The idea that changing magnetic fields can produce currents. Uh, uh, what, I, okay, well, I should say changing magnetic fields produce a potential difference. And if you place, you know, a wire or something, that potential difference can cause a current to circulate in your conductor. Uh, now, within that, uh, we have what's called Lenz's law, which deals specifically with this negative sign that does not want to appear. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, which deals specifically with that negative sign. And uh, I put it up here verbally. The, the mathematical consequence of having this negative sign is that when current flows in your conductor, according to an external magnetic field that is changing, the current will flow in the conductor to oppose the change in the magnetic field. And I'll say that again. When current is flowing in a conductor due to the presence of a changing external magnetic field, the direction of the current in the conductor will try to oppose the change. That's what we mean by status quo. Um, shoot, uh, it's a negative feedback loop. If you've, ever, if you've ever heard those terms, negative. So a negative feedback loop is not negative or positive in terms of good or bad. What a negative feedback loop is is any it'll oppose whatever change is occurring. So if it increases, a negative feedback loop will try to minimize the increase. Or if it's decreasing, a negative feedback loop will try to increase the decrease. So uh, let's see here. What's a negative feedback? Oh, example of a negative feedback loop. Take a bowl. Put a marble in it. Push the marble to a side. The bowl serves as a negative feedback loop. It forces the marble back to its original position. And that's kind of just a visual example. Uh, let's see. Of course, if there's a negative feedback loop, there's also positive feedback loops. What does a positive feedback loop do? Just out of curiosity, you can sometimes you run across these. Keeps it going. Whatever the change is, a positive feedback loop will try to emphasize that change, support that change. Uh, going back to our bowl example, take a bowl, flip it over, put a marble on it. So if you take a bowl, an upside down bowl, put a marble on it, if you push the marble to a side, the bowl will try to increase that, that perturbance. Right? The, ball, the, the marble will roll off the side of the bowl. It won't return to its position. The bowl will try to emphasize that change. So this negative sign is a negative feedback loop. Whatever the change is, the current will try to oppose that change. I don't know, do you guys run into negative or positive feedback? I mean, like negative feedback loops in biology are like regulations, right? Um, but you also have that tension, right? You have positive feedback, like, uh, shoot, is it glutamate? I can't remember if it's GABAergic or glutaminergic cells. I, I can't remember. One of them is excitation. And then what, dopaminergic is suppression? Is that right? There's GABA, there's glutamate, and there's dopamine. And I can't remember. One of them is an excitation, like a positive feedback loop, and the other one's a negative feedback loop, so I can't remember which. No, I could lie. Okay, good. Don't that's all I know about neurotransmitters, okay? So if you're like freaking out, I don't I don't know anything else than that. I know the substantia nigra capacca is the source of dopamine dopamine. Which suppresses motor function, which is, you know, like which dopamine regulation gets perturbed in Parkinson's disease, and then you, you, you lose that suppression, which is why you get kind of like twitching. Okay, anyway, you'll run into it in your field. I don't know where it comes into chemistry. I'm sorry. 
Except from like, a, oh yeah, a positive feedback loop would be something like adding water to an asset. There we go. Right? Only like biological example of positive feedback, which is really because it's childhood. Is what? Childhood. So, like, really? Animal, but you, like, keep going. Oh, okay. I'll have to ask my wife that. Yeah, I, I, that one I have no idea. Yeah. It's like the contraction causes like more of the hormone that makes the contraction. Oh, okay. It's like, okay, you're going. So, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, 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 I'll, okay, I'll buy that. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll buy that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'll put that in the repertoire. I was thinking exothermic, or uh, it seems like an exothermic reaction is a positive feedback loop. So if you add water to an acid, that's exothermic and it drives the reaction to continue, doesn't it? I know that's like one of the no nos in chemistry, adding water to an acid, because it can explode on you. Okay, I'll just make it up then. So I'll, childbirth, I hear childbirth is a positive feedback loop. Yeah. Anyway, your, yeah, your body's, I'm sure your body's full of them, I just don't know what they are, so. Uh, okay, in any case, let's get an idea. Let's uh, qualitatively get an idea about that negative sign and, and try to put this words and say it's a practice. Uh, so here's, here's uh, we're doing the same thing, I'm doing the pipe, it's just, instead of doing a full pipe, I just did a loop, okay? And uh, the question for you first, um, if I have a north pole of a magnet, so I've oriented the magnet so we're, we're clear on which way is north, and I've got a loop here, and I'll just get rid of this for a second so that you can't see that. So, you know, close your eyes. There we go. Uh, so if I've got the north pole of a loop going downwards, or excuse me, north pole of a magnet going downwards through a loop. And so the first question is, uh, what's the flux through the loop? What happens to the flux through the loop as it moves downwards? The magnet that is. Shoot, maybe we should review flux. What does flux mean again? And don't come at me with flux capacitor, which by this time you realize is a bunch of garbage. All right. Yeah. What's what's uh, what's the mathematical? What's the what's the conceptual idea? Don't give me the mathematical definition. Conceptually, what does flux represent? How much of a vector passes through an area? So if I want to think about the flux of the magnetic field, I've got a defined area, the loop. And my magnetic field is generated by this magnet. Oh, I should ask, direction of the magnetic field. Runs from blank pole to which blank pole? Which pole does it emanate from? Which pole does it for lack of a better term, sink to. But you got you got a 50-50. Does it emanate from the North Pole or the South Pole? The North Pole. Okay. So if you want to think about the magnetic field that we're think that we're dealing with, it emanates from the North Pole and link goes to the South Pole. So you can think of it going like this, okay? So you get that dipole pattern. Sorry, this arrow is to represent the direction that it's moving. Okay. So it emanates from the north, it goes to the south. So as this magnet, as the north pole of the magnet approaches the loop, you get more magnetic fields pointing down through the loop. Or I guess a different way to say, you could say either more magnetic field lines pointing down through the loop, or you could say the length of those field lines is larger. Uh, either either or is fine with me. Is that okay so far? So in which case is the flux larger? Okay, I guess I already got that. Excuse me, as this magnetic magnet moves down, the final flux is going to be greater than the initial. All right, say I start with it where it's shown and I move it down to this location. 
right? The, the flux is going to increase. I'm closer to the loop. There's more magnetic field lines going through that loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as the magnet moves closer to this loop, I have more magnetic field lines that go through that loop. It's closer to the magnet. You could think of either more magnetic field lines going through the loop or the length of the lines going through the loop increases. Either one I interpret as the strength of the field has increased. Yeah, yeah, nay. So the change in flux, positive or negative? Positive, right? The final flux is greater than the initial. Final my change in is final minus initial. Okay. So you can think of, okay, well, that means that my flux, oops, shoot, A is constant, N is constant. Yeah, yeah, so B is not constant. There we go. We're getting closer. So you can think of the flux is greater than zero. The change, the final is greater than the initial, the change is greater than zero. That's the first part. You have to figure out which is the, is the flux increasing or decreasing. Now, nature does not like this increasing flux. Nature abhors a change. It does not want more magnetic field lines going down through the loop. So it will do something about it. It will say, I don't like the fact that there are more magnetic field lines going down through the loop. So I will create a magnetic field that points in which direction. Ah, I don't like the fact that there are more lines going down through the loop. I will generate a field going up to oppose that change. That's what we mean by it. it generates a field to oppose the change. You've got more lines going through the loop and going down. The loop itself will generate a magnetic field going up to oppose that change. So, oh shoot, I think I asked that question. Did I ask that question? Sorry, I should just actually follow my slides instead. Yeah, we already got that. Oops, there we go. So that's why, that's what I call the induced magnetic field. Because of this falling magnet, more field lines pointing down, the loop will induce a magnetic field pointing up to oppose that change. There, yeah, there is an external magnetic field due to the falling magnet. I'll call this external. And then there is an induced magnetic field due to the shoot. There is a external field of the falling magnet. And then there is an induced field uh how do i explain this do i say due to the changing flux of the falling magnet i guess might be the the better way to say it but yes there are two fields one is due to the magnet the other one is due to the changing flux through the wire the loop If the induced magnetic field is pointing up, which way is current running in the loop? This is kind of like this is kind of like right hand rule backwards, right? Usually you get the current and you find the direction of the field. Here I'm saying you've got the direction of the field. What's the direction of the current? Yeah, go ahead, talk to me. We get an idea. Right? What's the direction of the current due to this induced field? Or what, I'm sorry, what direction of the current will generate 
the, the induced field. There we go. Sorry, I was in Columbus car shopping last night. I get home until 10. Of course, you also, you also have two ways, right? You can just guess one way and check it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll also work. Not rolling off the tongue today. Let's, 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 let's. Yeah. Just feel a little, little off today. There we go. Oh yeah, it should just be on this. Should be on this page. Which way does this? Which way does this? Yeah, okay. that's the same question. Got it. I mean, you can always check. You got two options, right? The magnetic field due to the wire has to be pointing up, and you can always you can always do your right hand rule and just check if the current's running this way on the front of the wire, then the magnetic field due to that current would be down, which is not what I want. I want it to be up. So if I'm grabbing the front of that wire and I grab it on the front, left with my, my thumb going to the right, now I get the magnetic field going up through the center of the loop, which is the direction I need. Yeah, yeah, pretend that you're grabbing. I just said, okay, pretend I don't know which way. I'm just going to guess. And I say, okay, let me guess that it's going this way. The, and the front of the wire, the front of the wire, I'm grabbing it. Let me say, assume that it's going to the left. The current, yeah. So I'll just assume the current's flowing to the left, and then I'll check to see if that current gives me the correct direction of the magnetic field. So I'll grab the wire, and I go, oh, no. According to my right hand rule, if the current's going to the left, when I grab the wire, the magnetic field would be going down. I say, that's not what I want. I know the magnetic field should be going up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I, I, yeah. <laughs> so then I say, okay, well, let me grab it the other way. I'll grab it with the current going to the right. Now, in the center of the loop, my magnetic field's going up. That jives with what I need. You end up with something like this where the current is going, I don't know, from the perspective of the magnet, I guess. If you're over the loop, you'd see this current going counterclockwise. So it'd be coming out this way, going in. Notice the magnetic fields are in opposite directions, right? The magnetic field of the falling magnet's one way. If I wanted to model this current carrying loop as a bar magnet, I should model it like this, right? That would create a field going up and, you know. So as this magnet falls, it's like creating a small bar magnet in the wire that pushes in the opposite direction by like putting two north poles together. Well, how about this? So as the north pole of the magnet approaches the loop, there's an induced magnetic field going up that causes that that's due to current running counterclockwise in the loop. 
let me put in an extra page here. I feel like we just want more practice. I can see it. You like more practice. So I'll put an extra page in here. How about this? So I'll draw it because I don't have it ready. How about this? Let's pretend that the loop is now here. The magnet has passed through. And I'll put a south pole here and a north pole there. What direction is the induced current in the wire running? Go ahead, talk to your neighbor, see if you can come up with an answer. Magnetic, magnet has now passed through the loop. What direction is current running in the loop? Go. See if you can hack, take all those ideas, those three or four questions, see if we can put them together and find out what direction is the current running in the loop. Go ahead. Yourself about the flux, and you know, flux, and I get the changing flux, and figure out what the loop wants to do. And then yeah, you don't forget it's still falling this way, still falling. Falling down, if you would look at that, then the other way. Oh, that's one way to change. I'm sorry, is that? Here, this would be related to that. Yeah, if you, if you did this situation, then you're kind of pissing off the direction. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to say it. Yep. It revolves around that, and then stay the same for all those two directions. Uh, it, it, it was like, uh, let's see here. So your flux is now, uh, so your flux becomes more negative as the magnet approaches the loop. We'll have to, we'll do that one. Let's go, we'll finish this one and then we'll do that one. That'd be good. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So the, the problem is the uh, it's hard. There's like four situations, and it's hard to memorize. It's easier to just kind of get to the, the situation. Yeah. You got an idea? Work through it. Work through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is always. This is why we let's try it. Let's see what happens here. Uh, I think I called down positive y on the last slide, so we'll just keep that. First question, uh, which direction is the magnetic field pointing through the loop? Let's just ask ourselves that first off. The magnetic field due to the magnet, or if, if, if you prefer, the external magnetic field. Which direction is it pointing at the location of the loop? Yeah, okay, I got up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, magnetic fields emanate from which pole? The North Pole, and they sink to the South Pole. It goes down. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So the magnets pass through. So we should say, let's let's start off here. The magnetic, field, the external magnetic field is now pointing down. Hey, Victor Robinson. Could you share your screen, please? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You are kidding? No, I'm not. You guys, you got to tell me this stuff. My, my, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you guys got to tell me this kind of stuff. Otherwise, I'm just going to be blind. I'm recording, right? Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Can somebody tell Dr. Robinson my microphone isn't working? Okay. Yes, thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Okay, I'll try to splice in the vi video with uh, the audio later. So, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so we have the south pole of the magnet, and it's uh, the external field due to the magnet is pointing down. Next question. 
as the magnet moves further away from the loop, the magnitude of the external field increases or decreases. As the magnet gets further away from the loop of wire, decreases. decreases. So right here, you might have some magnetic field strength, but when the magnet's down here, that magnetic field strength is going to be this farther away from the magnet. The magnitude of the external field will decrease. So which is larger? We'll call this the initial state. We'll call this the final state. Which is larger? The initial flux or the final flux? Which one's larger? The initial, right? Larger field strength, right? B is larger. Area stays the same. The angle stays the same. B is larger. The initial flux is larger. So we'll go like this. Next question. Because the flux through the loop is decreasing, which direction does the loop want to provide, uh, say, provide a magnet? What direction is the magnetic field induced? Does it want to oppose or does it want to support that decrease or does it want to oppose the decrease? Or a different way. Is the induced field going to be up or is it going to be down? Up. Up. So if, uh, let's say for state one, the external field is like this and state two, it's like this. Right. Due to the, the bar magnet. Does nature like the status quo or does nature not like the status quo? In other words, if the magnetic field started out like this, is nature going to be happy that it decreased? No. So what's nature going to do? It's going to try to produce a magnetic field down. It wants to try to keep it like this. Whatever it started with, it wants to try to keep it like that. So for this case, it is going to want to run an induced field going down. Because the external field is decreasing, the, the induced field tries to prevent that decrease from occurring. Uh, I mean external to refer to the field of the bar magnet, and I mean induced to refer to the field of the coil of wire. Yeah, it gets kind of, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hairy, like, oh, yeah, we've got two magnetic fields going on, right? The external one and then how the coil reacts to that external field. So a different way to think about it. Nature wants to try to keep the total field constant. And so it will provide an induced magnetic field to try to keep the total field constant. Might be another way of saying that. Don't like change, stay constant. What else we got? Other questions? Yeah. So if we kind of <clears throat> draw it like this, is the induced magnetic field always going to try to get back to the initial state? Yes. Yes. Whatever the initial state is, the induced field will try to run it to that initial state. Yes. So in the last example, I guess a different way to 
if I took, uh, did I write it in here? If you take the initial external field, it would have been small and the final would have been large. And so the induced field tries to get it back to the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a good way to think about it as well. Mm -hmm. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've identified the induced field has to be going down, pointing down. The last step is which way does the current run? In order to produce a field going down in the center of the wire, which way does the current need to be running? So again, if when in doubt, just check both. So I say, OK, well, let me assume that current in the front of that wire is running to the right. Grab the wire. Fingers are pointing up in the center of the loop. That's not the direction I want the induced field. I want it to be going down. So it turns out that in order to provide an induced field pointing downwards, current has to be going this direction. Uh, what would this be? So it'd be clockwise as viewed from above. So you can imagine as as the magnet approaches the loop, current is running counterclockwise. Excuse me. There we go. Got to get that right. As the magnet's approaching the loop, current runs counterclockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Magnet passes through the loop. Now moving away, current switches direction. So it's running one way as the north pole of the magnet approaches the loop. Now, as the south pole recedes from the loop, it goes the opposite way, flips. Yeah. So with the pipe example, mm -hmm. uh, we basically just do that as um, a bunch of wires. Like yeah, just instead of thinking of a solid pipe, just think of this as a bunch of loops that are stacked on top of each other. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. Like uh, as I drop the magnet through, you could think of it, let's say the North Pole is facing down. As the magnet falls through, all of the loops below the rat magnet have current running one way. All of the magnet, all the loops above the magnet have current running the opposite way. As the magnet falls down this thing. Are the fields, why don't they just like cancel out? Why don't the fields cancel out? The magnitude of the current in each of these loops is going to be different. Some of it will cancel. Yes, but not all of it. Uh, let's see here. And there's a secondary effect, which we will not go into, but you could think about if you want. There's an induced, if I take this coil, this loop right up here, there is an induced field in this loop due to that loop. But the induced field in that loop affects the magnetic flux, say, in this loop down here. And so the induced field due to this top loop will actually affect the induced field due to this bottom. So there's more than just, I'm, I'm just thinking this one off. But yeah, you could play this game and keep going all the way down. Yeah. So yes, the induced field in this, this loop down here is affected not only by the falling magnets, but also the changing induced fields by all the coils up here. So it becomes, I mean, you've got the right idea. You've got the right physical idea. The math gets hard. So yes, you've got the right conceptualization. The math just gets harder. Uh, I'm not quite sure. In fact, I'd probably do the math exactly how you stated it. I would take that thing, I would model as a bunch of loops, and then figure it out on a loop by loop basis, and then iterate. <laughs> Yeah, your hand up. Yeah. Uh, so, would the acceleration of the magnet be less at the beginning of the, of the 
Acceleration at the beginning is going to be greater than at the end because it hits terminal velocity. So it'll, it'll hit a terminal. So the acceleration has got to be non-zero at the beginning and zero by the time it hits terminal velocity. Uh, but it would be an interesting question. I have zero idea what that function looks like in time. Of course, human nature is to say, oh, it's exponential. But I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's exponential or maybe it's a one over one over time. I, I don't know what the I don't know what the function looks like. Um, how would I? I could try to get an it. Maybe I'll sit down and see if I can actually come up with an answer. Oh wait. Uh, gut tells me that it's exponential. I wonder if I can model this as an RL circuit. If it's an RL circuit, if I can model it as an RL circuit, then it's definitely exponential. So I got to think if I can model it like that. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm about 55% okay saying it's an exponential decrease. Yeah. Well, shoot. How about if you just flip the magnet? I mean, we did with the North Pole going down, but what happens if we had done it with the South Pole going down? What's your gut tell you? And you got North Pole going down. You have South Pole going. You have North Pole going towards the loop. You know, it runs one way. You have South Pole moving away from the loop. You know, it goes another way. How about if I did South Pole going towards the loop? What, what is that going to look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about if we did something like this where the loops here? I don't know why I keep drawing on this side, probably because it's easier to look at. Let's go over here, change it up. What happens if I have my loop and I do the south pole and the north pole? So I do something like this and I drop the magnet that way. Yeah, go ahead. Why not? We could always do four situation. I mean, the more we practice it, the better the better off we are. So say let's say it's moving this way now, and uh, I'll, I'll call negative. I'll call down positive. That's fine. Shouldn't change anything. Uh, Which way is it now? So silly, I need to forget to share the screen. So I'm calling so I can splice in screenshots. What's the direction of the external field? Up towards the south pole. So the direction of the external field is pointing up. So, and uh, we'll just use this to represent the initial 
external field. Okay. So as the magnet falls, what happens to the external field? The magnitude. It increases. Okay, so so a final position would be you know larger. What does that mean about the direction for the induced magnetic field? The magnetic field generated by current running around the loop. Should point down. Yeah, good, good, good. So yeah, now the induced field is pointing down, right? I don't like the fact that it's the field is getting stronger pointing up. So I will induce a field that points down to try to oppose that change. And so which way does current need to run in order to produce an induced field pointing down? Why wasn't there positive feedback in the last one? Oh, I'm sorry? Why wasn't there positive feedback in the last one? Uh, it should be a negative feedback in the last one. Mm -hmm. The induced field is always in the opposite direction of the change. So this one, the change is increasing going up. So the induced field has to be going down. So which way is the current running to induce a field going down? Clockwise is seen from above. Yeah, good. See, it takes a little practice, but once you kind of get a feel for it, it'll take a little while. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have we have something that goes clockwise. So the front in the front it's going this way, and in the back it's going that way. So what's your gut tell you? After the magnet has passed through the loop and it's receding away, the current should now be counterclockwise. It'll flip directions on you. Now we can go through and run it. I do not encourage you to memorize those. I would encourage you to think more about how to get it, the process-wise. So a magnet, a north pole approaching the loop will generate the same sort of current as a, is it a south pole moving away? No, a north pole approaching, okay, see, I don't even know. Just if you go through the process, then you're fine. I would not I would not encourage you to memorize the four situations, right? You have a North Pole approaching, a North Pole receding, a South Pole approaching, a South Pole receding, right? There's four ways to do it. I do not encourage you to memorize those, otherwise you'll just screw it up sometime. Uh, if you go through this process, you'll get it right every time. Hopefully. Okay, let's say 85% of the time. Okay, there we go. What? I'm sorry? Uh, so we need the induced magnetic field to point down inside the loop. And so we can apply our right hand rule. If I apply my right hand rule and I grab the wire, say the front of the wire, with my thumb going to the left, my fingers are pointing down when I reach the inside of the loop. And so that's, that's why we say that it's running clockwise. Clockwise is seen from above. So if we're if we're up here above the loop looking. Of course, you if I ever say clockwise, don't forget to ask me where I'm standing. Because clockwise as seen from above is counterclockwise as viewed from underneath. So you got to be careful about if you use clockwise, counterclockwise. And that alternating current should not be surprising. Right? The, I mean, the, the issue is that because, now oh, no, I should say, please remember, this is 100% empirical. You say, Greg, give me some deeper reason why this occurs. I can't. Okay. The deeper reasoning is, I take a, this, I drop a magnet in, and it seems to obey this idea. That's, I mean, right? Like Faraday's law is empirical. There wasn't some deeper understanding or theoretical knowledge that went into it. It was, hey, this, this equation appears to describe what I actually observe here. 
I wish I could give you, I mean, in some sense, I mean, like you say, why does nature do this? I have zero idea. I don't know. I know it does. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. It's like asking me, like, why, I don't know, why did we start out with hydrogen? I have no idea. Once we have hydrogen, I know nucleosynthesis, but I don't know why it's hydrogen. I'm like, uh, yeah. there's something that I just thought, yeah. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know. Is a CRV better than a RAV4? I don't know. I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. Maybe I should do the escape. Oh, but then there's the equinox. But then you look at the gas mileage on the camera and you're like, screw these crossover SUVs. 40 miles to the gallon? Sign me up. No. You can always get more practice. More practice. Let's try more practice and more, like a little more practical uh, uh, ideas. Uh, I, I mean, I have a list of other questions you could always ask yourself. I think we probably covered most of these, though. Let me get through a couple blank slides here. You know, other questions upon, you know, what happens if I use a stronger magnet? Right. You know, what happens if, if I use a stronger magnet? What do you think happens to the induced current? Curiosity. She's got to tell you. It's going to be larger. Yeah, if I use a larger, if I use a stronger magnet, I would expect the induced current to get larger. All right. Now, I, unfortunately, there's not really a good way. I wish there were a way for me to get a stronger magnet without increasing the mass, because then it would very, it would be very apparent. Uh, but we might be able to do something like this, where you know, one, two, three, four. Five, okay, about five. You know, very scientific. I guess we should have used our heartbeats. But, so we'll try this. I don't know if this will last longer or not. I mean, part of me says, okay, now I've got a stronger magnet, so it should take longer, but I've also increased the mass, which means, you know, maybe I've increased the, I get it side by side, let's find out. One, two, oh no, okay, so that didn't work. That's sad. Oh, but you know what I did? Oh. You should say something to Greg. Oh, I did this experiment wrong. I bet. All right, let's do this. Let's see if this lasts any longer. No, no, not really. I think I did do it wrong. Which one took longer? Did, did it take longer? I, that's what I, I mean. Let's let's try that again. One, two, okay. So this way. Yeah, the second one definitely took longer. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Well. Little keep going. I, I like the idea about thinking about poles. Uh, okay. Let's see. I don't think I, I suspect that that's not quite the idea. I don't think I don't. We'll we'll play with spherical cows in space. Okay. okay. So we're not. Yeah, yeah. We'll play with spherical cows in space for a second. But I like this idea of the poles. In fact, you probably saw me do it. If I talk about this top magnet, you know that this bottom of the top magnet is one pole, and the top of the bottom magnet is the, the other one. Wait, no longer external it, external? it seems like a larger magnet will generate a, a faster change in magnetic flux, a faster delta phi, and so that should generate a larger current. But you, you saw what I did here, right? When I did this, I did this, right? Which means, let's say that this is the North Pole. This one next door is the South Pole, right? You notice I just rotated it, right? So I went from this, now I've got a really strong magnet, well, a stronger magnet, and I did this, which makes it look 
stronger or weaker? If I put a North Pole and a South Pole right next to each other. That's no, weaker. Hence, hence why it's taking less time to fall. Oh, so that's it. Oh, this. So I did it. We did it. Right? I was like, oh yeah, can we show that it's a stronger field? With the, yeah, right, we did it. I'm not inadvertently, but we did it, right? Like, okay, so you get some idea about time. Well, now I'll just make it stronger by like this. Same mass, same magnets. Oh, this is even better experiment. Okay. We did it, thank you. I feel like I should have like a John Oliver button right here and just hit it. No. Other questions to ponder? Okay, we already did the flipping of the magnet. Right. Uh, moves away. And so I, I wasn't anticipating, but yeah, like questions good to think about. Uh, yeah, here's an interesting. One. What do you think happens? I no, I, unfortunately, I don't know if I I don't know if I trust myself with a saw. To actually cut holes in this thing. But I, and I'm not talking about holes this way. Let's imagine for a second that I could cut windows. What would happen? What if I cut slices in the ball in the tube vertically? So that no longer is that solid ring all the way around. What do you think would happen to the fall? How long it takes the magnet to fall? Would the magnet take less time to fall, or would it take more time to fall? Or maybe the same. To say, why? Good, yeah, yeah, right. If I, if I cut holes into the sides here, I essentially have decreased the number of loops that can carry current. Right, I've broken some, by cutting holes, I'm cutting some of these loops. They can't carry current. And so good, if I've decreased the number of loops that can carry current, I'm going to decrease the induced magnetic field. Right? Not all of the loops can actually generate an induced magnetic field anymore because they can't run the current. And so yes, the, the induced magnetic field will decrease, and therefore it should take less time for the magnet to fall through. Yeah, good, good, good. So maybe we should do that. Maybe I should get another copper pipe and drill holes in it. I don't know. I, I, I trust myself with the drill press. I can do that. Band saw, I can do that. Table saw. If you ever play with the table saw, please be careful. Right. Saw stops. Have you ever seen those? That looks like a wonderful engineering solution to an everyday problem. Have you ever seen these things? I say some people saw stop. As a it's a type of circular table saw, they run a current through the blade, is my understanding. So the, the eight-inch table saw blade, they're running a current through it and measuring it. And it's really interesting because it's actually used to find the resistivity of the blade. Now the issue is that if you happen to hit something that changes the resistivity of the blade. There's a little break that fires and stops the blade within a couple tenths of a second. No, not even that, like a millisecond. You know what's really good at changing the resistance of a solid blade? Well, huh? A person, blood. So they actually set it up so that it's measuring constantly the resistance of the saw blade through a current, passing a current using the you know Ohm's law to figure out what the resistance of the saw blade actually is. And if it sees a change in the resistance of the saw blade, it automatically fires a brake to stop the blade. Which is really cool. It's, I, think it's, I think that's probably one of the coolest engineering solutions to a problem I've ever seen. Those blades, like, not conductive. You have to, I have, I have seen reports that you have to make sure the wood is dry. Oh, yeah, because of the water. Because, yeah, the water could accidentally cause it to fire. Yeah, but you, you can go and watch like videos. They try to, they, they, they literally have a saw running at full speed and they try to cut a hot dog in half and they can't do it. Like the blade stops and retracts before they can get all the way through a hot dog. So I'm like, you know, I want to go and shake that guy's hand and give him a high four, right? Like, no, 
you want to use a better push, like I don't know what push the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other. I mean, there's a reason why my wife does not allow me to use table saws. She just hasn't told me yet. I haven't figured out why. No, they scared the snot out of me. Second only to a lathe. Okay. Questions? It's good things to find. It. Good things to yeah. Keep going on that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna do this one first. Sure, let's do this one first. Yeah, we'll go for it. I mean, I showed you the railgun example. So um, uh, this is always, a, again, an interesting one. I've got the railgun set up, so uh, two parallel wires. I have a bridging piece of material that's conductive so that you have a complete loop. And uh, yeah, I use this example because it's a convenient way. The, the falling magnet is a convenient way of thinking about changing magnetic field strengths. Right? Here, instead of changing the magnetic field strength, what is actually changing to cause a change in flux? It's not the external magnetic field strength. So what is changing in order that the flux increases or decreases? Quick, how can I change the flux? I can change. I can change the area. What else could I change? The magnetic field strength. What's the third thing I could change? The angle, the orientation of the area with the magnetic field. Here, I'm not changing the magnetic field strength. Right. Constant magnetic field here. I'm not changing the angle between the area or the area and the magnetic field. The thing that I'm changing is okay, come on, is that area. The theta is constant, v is constant, is the area that's not constant. And remember, we saw when we throw the switch, current starts running through the loop. Let's say it's running up. If it runs up and the magnetic field is out, it will feel a force going to the right. Which means this highlighted area that it's in yellow, as the bar moves to the right, that area increases. Right? The bar moves to the right, that yellow piece, that yellow area will get larger. So go ahead, take a minute. Assume that the width of the bar, this is X, you got L, the length, the separation between the two rails. Go ahead, give me an expression for the change in flux per unit time. Well, first of all, actually do this. Get an expression for the flux. Then get an expression for the change in flux. And then look at the change in flux per time. And so do it through pictures. Yeah, go ahead, talk to you there, get an idea. Get an expression for the flux, get an expression for the change in the flux, then worry about the change in flux over time. Okay. Yeah, do all three. It's not gonna change it, is it? No, good. Yeah, okay. This one's more plain than the equations. We should probably do the direct. Once you have that, you could always get the direction of the induced current too, if you really want. Oh, okay. The 
So the magnetic field is kind of not a little bit. Is it that small? Yeah. Yeah. That's what. It, yeah. So the little guys on the magnetic field. And yeah, yeah, it's also parallel to the magnetic field. All right, so you can think of, hey, uh, take this square and rotate it like that, it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. Rotate it like this, it's parallel. So what's the angle between the end and the magnetic field? Okay. Uh, let's use here. Okay. Let's, I'm thinking about, yeah, yeah, let's use zero. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you flashed on to the third one, you changed them. Right? You get one with the magnetic field, so you're changing the one with the magnetic field. This one's changing the one with that. Unless the third one will have to pop it out. Yeah, so we always get the same Yeah, right now. You got an idea? One time, last time? Yeah. Let's, let's go at it. So, hey, okay, well, let's start off. Let's. It's always good to oops. Uh, it's always good to break down problems into smaller pieces if I can actually. There we go. If I can actually get a thing. So let's let's start off with the phi. How do I get the flux? What's the general expression for flux? B a cosine of that, right? B a. Yeah. Yeah. We have the magnetic field strength. I'll write it like this, times the area, times the angle between the two. And it's always good to ask ourselves, you know, what's the angle between the area and the magnetic field? Ninety would make sure that the flux is zero. Right? If it's 90 degrees, that means the magnetic field is going this way. And the area is perpendicular, right, 90 degrees away. Yeah. So what's the angle for this case? If the magnetic field's going this way, my area is kind of zero. Yeah. Yeah, zero. So we'll put in zero. The angle between my area and the magnetic field is zero. Cosine is zero. This will. You know, cosine of zero, pi, pi over two, you know, lock those. If you find yourself in some sort of timed exam, you might want to make sure you got those locked away. And it just helps you everyone. So you don't want to have to check your calculator on those. You want to just be able to know it. So yeah, be careful. Okay. So, so here for this case, cosine of theta is zero. Excuse me. The theta is zero. Cosine of zero is one. So we could rewrite this as simply the flux is given by the magnetic field strength times A, area. I like that idea. Do you guys like that idea? I, I like that idea. Let's do that. Yes, I agree. Let's go ahead and instead of writing A for the area, we have some physical dimensions. We know how far apart the rails are, we'll call that L. And we know how, I don't know, how far the bar is from the starting point. Where do we get theta from again? Where do we get theta from? Yeah, we argue that the area is parallel to the magnetic field. Not perpendicular, right? No flux. If the area is perpendicular to the magnetic field, no flux. Or in parallel. Oh, I'm sorry. Think of attaching a little arrow to the, the area, the surface. And then as you orient, think about that arrow. It could be parallel to the magnetic field. 
sorry. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry. So far, we have only dealt with uh, cosine of zero. Yeah. You're right, though, that there are other situations. If it's 90 degrees, if the magnetic field's going this way, and I turn my area so it's this way, how much of my magnetic field is going to go through my area? If it's raining, if I'm out in the desert and it's raining, how much rain do I catch if my area is perpendicular to my rain? None, right? If the area is perpendicular, magnetic field's this way, and I turn my area sideways, nothing's going to go through. Well, we've got an expression for our flux. So now let's think about how does the flux change? Does B change, the magnetic field strength for this situation? No. Does the length between the rails change? No. The only thing that changes is X, how far down the line my bar is. So I'll go ahead, let's just rewrite this. We'll call it, okay, well, we'll say that this is the magnetic field, that constant times the length between the bars, and the only thing that changes is delta x. So my change in magnetic flux is just B times L times delta x. Well, what happens if I want my change in flux per unit time? I mean, want delta phi over delta t. I'm thinking Faraday's law now. All I have to do is divide both of these by delta t. Don't I, I'm sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're, we're one step away. I mean, you probably already see it, right? If I divide both of these by delta t, I agree. I want v in there. And we dance a little j. No, Seinfeld fan. See it? What's delta x over delta t? What do we usually call that? Velocity. That's the velocity. There is our velocity. Right here, we can combine these two. That delta x over delta t, we could just write that as the velocity of the bar as it moves down the line. Excuse me, I forgot my magnitude signs there. So as the bar moves down the line, it's increasing the area. Because of that increased area, we have an idea about how the flux changes. Question for you. The induced magnetic field, we're increasing the flux through the area. Which way does the induced magnetic point out of the page or should it point into the page? If my flux is increasing, or maybe I'll put it a different way, the number of magnetic field lines is increasing through my loop. Should I have an induced field going into the board or out of the board? Into the board, right? As the bar moves down the line, more dots 
are inside in, in that area. So you could think of, okay, well, that's like increasing the magnetic flux. So there must be an induced magnetic field going into the board to oppose that increase. Question, which way does the induced current run? If the induced field is into the board, which way does the induced current run? As seen from this position, should it be clockwise or counterclockwise? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get behind you so I can see what you Okay, do it again. Okay, I'll buy it. Trying to get better. Which way does it run? Clockwise. I need the induced field into the board. So imagine grabbing and okay, it's into the board here. Grab that wire, yeah, it's into the board there. You know something funny? You notice that the induced current runs exactly in the opposite direction of the, the originally applied current. Right, I close the switch. The initial current wants to run counterclockwise through this loop, which forces the bar to move down the line. But as the bar moves down the line, it increases the induced current to oppose the original current running through the bar. Guess what? Current high current, and then no more current flows through the bar. Two on that. Two on that. Hey, thanks for your attention. I'll see you once. Or yeah. I'll see you when I see you. We'll be here again sometime this week, sometime at noon. Wondering why mag magnets are so cool.